All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Committee on Land Use. I am Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, Chair of this committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are present here today. We have Council Members Gibson, Barron, Kuhl, Levin, Miller, Reynoso, Trigger, Grudenchik, Adams, Ayala, Diaz Sr., Chair Moya, Rivera, Chair Riley, Brooke Powers, and Borelli. And we've also been joined by Council Member Kalos. I want to thank Chair Moya and Chair Riley for their work on our two subcommittees. Today we will vote on a number of applications referred out for both of our subcommittees. From our landmark subcommittee, we will vote to approve LU's A47, TMN1002, West Harlem Renaissance, and TMN1002, West Harlem Renaissance UDAP, and Article 11 tax exemption. Submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development, pursuant to Section 693 and 694 of the General Municipal Law and Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law. The application seeks a waiver of designation requirements of and section 197-C and 197-D of the charter. And an approval of an urban development action area project and approval of an exemption from real property taxation for property located at 101 West 141st Street, AKA 621-23 Lenox Avenue and 121-123 West 144th Street in the Manhattan District represented by Councilmember Perkins. We will also vote to approve some modifications. I will use numbers 889-893, 893, Cooper Park Commons for property in Council Member Reynoso's district in Brooklyn. These applications, this application requests approval of a proposed amendment of the zoning map changes in R6 district to an R7-2 slash C2-4 district, an amendment of Appendix F of the zoning resolution to designate a mandatory inclusionary housing area the grant of a special permit pursuant to section 74-743A2 of the zoning resolution to modify height and setback requirements, the minimum distance between buildings within the large scale general development, the designation of property located at 288 Jackson Avenue, block 285, lot one, as an urban development action area, an urban development action area project for such area and the disposition of such property to a developer selected by HPD and the modification of a prior disposition of city-owned property located at 20 Kingsland Avenue, Block 2885, Lot 10, to change the permit community facility use from a healthcare facility to use to a general community facility uses. These actions will facilitate the redevelopment of 4.5 acres former Greenpoint Hospital campus at East Williamsburg into Cooper Park Commons, a mixed-use complex with two new buildings and the enlargement of two of the historic former hospital buildings providing approximately 553 units of affordable housing and senior housing, a community facility uses and light retail, and the on-site replacement of 200-bed Cleman Residence Homeless Shelter. The council's modification will remove MIH option two and add the deep affordability option and revise the, desi the design of the public publicly accessible area to reduce parking and vehicle driveway areas and increase open space and pedestrian safety. We will vote to approve some modifications that will use A48 A51 related to the Glenmore Manor project for property in Councilmember Dharma Diaz's district in Brooklyn. Submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development, these applications request approval of an amendment to zoning map section 17C and 17D, changing from an R6D to an R7A slash C24 district and changing from an R6 district to an R7D slash C2 4 district. Amendment of the zoning resolution modifying Appendix F to designate a mandatory inclusionary housing area, a designation of an urban development action area, approval of an urban development action area project for such area, and approval of disposition of property located at 305-309 Mother Gaston Boulevard, 46-64 Christopher Avenue, and 111-117 Glenmore Avenue to a developer of HPD's choosing, and approval of a third amendment to the Brownsville second urban renewal plan to change the designation of site 11B from public slash institutional use to residential use. The proposed actions will facilitate the development of Glenmore at Manor and an 11-story mixed-use building with approximately 232 affordable housing units and 18,600 square feet of commercial and community space as an entrepreneurial hub for local businesses and not-for-profit incubation. We will vote to modify the application by striking MIH option two and adding deep affordability MIH option. From our zoning subcommittee, we will vote to approve the modifications of preconsidered items for the 1045 Atlantic Avenue rezoning proposal on the Euler 
number C210276, ZMK, and N210277, ZRK, related to property in Council Member Cornegie's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an M1-1 district to a C6-3 a district and a related zoning text amendment to establish an MIH program area utilizing MIH option two and the workforce option. And to establish special street wall regulations for sites in C6-3A district in Brooklyn Community District 3 with frontage on Atlantic Avenue. Together, these actions will facilitate the development of a new 17-story mixed-use building with ground floor retail and office use on the second floor and approximately 426 dwelling units. A modification will be to strike MIH workforce option. We will also vote to approve the modifications LUs AA2 and AA3 for the 185-17 Hillside Avenue rezoning related to property in Councilmember Gennaro's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to rezone portions of an existing R3X and R6A districts to an R7A district and to extend an existing C2-4 commercial overlay and a special downtown Jamaica district over the rezoning area along Hillside Avenue and a related zoning text amendment establishing an MIH program area utilizing options one and two as well as special bulk and parking regulations for R7A district within MIH areas within the special downtown Jamaica district. Our modification will be to strike MIH option two. We will also vote to approve the modifications that will use 894 and 895 for the 824 Metropolitan Avenue rezoning related to property in Councilmember Reynoso's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to rezone portions of an existing R6B and C8-2 district to an R7A district and to extend an existing C2-4 commercial overlay over the rezoning area along Metropolitan and Bushwick Avenues and a related zoning text amendment establishing an MIH area utilizing options one and two. Our modifications will be to strike MIH option two and to add the deep affordability option. We will also vote to approve LUs 896 for the 624 Morris Avenue rezoning related to property in my district in the Bronx. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to establish a C1-4 commercial overlay district within an existing R7-1 district to legalize and permit the modest expansion of existing commercial uses on Morris Avenue between East 153rd Street and East 151st Street. We will vote to approve the modifications of the Gowanus Neighborhood Plan, LUs number 6869 through 874. These applications affect property in Council Member Landers and Levin's District in Brooklyn. Our modification to the zoning text amendment will adjust the permitted uses in manufacturing and MX districts refine the definition of Gowanus mixed uses, expand and strengthen the Gowanus mixed incentives, establish lower height limits south of Thomas Green Park to reduce shadows on the park, adjust the authorization for large mixed uses sites, and strike MIH option two, leaving MIH option one and the deep affordability option to ensure the deepest affordability. Together, these actions will transform an area of Brooklyn currently zoned for limited industrial and commercial development into a dynamic mixed-use, mixed-income neighborhood with approximately 8,495 new housing units, including nearly 3,000 affordable units, 1.5 acres of new parkland, 4 acres of new waterfront open space, and significant projected commercial and community facility space. The council members Lander and Levin have negotiated a comprehensive package of additional capital and policy commitments from the administration, including an unprecedented city investment in NYCHA. We will approve LU's numbers 884 through 887, the Gowana CSO facility application, and LU's 888, the Mercy Home UDAP amendment. These applications include map changes affecting Douglas Street and Fifth Avenue, a site selection, selection action, and a site selection and acquisition action to facilitate the Gowanus Canal CSO facilities on the east side of the canal between Degraw and Butler Streets in Councilmember Levin's district, and a second avenue and Fifth Avenue in Councilmember Landers district. The UDAP amendment action will facilitate the development of approximately 45 units of affordable housing at the Mercy Home site of 485-487 Fourth Avenue. We will also vote to approve some modifications, 343 Madison Avenue, MTA HQ, special permit application on the num LU numbers 867 and 868. These actions relate to property in Council Member Powell's district in Manhattan. The council modification will be to lower the building's podium height. We will also vote to approve the modifications LUs 864, 865, and 866 related to the New York Blood Center. 
This proposal seeks a zoning map amendment and zoning text amendment and a special permit pursuant to the proposed zoning text. These actions affecting property in the, the districts of council member Kalos and Powers will facilitate the development of a proposed new 16 story, 334 feet tall life science research and development building at 310 E67th Street in Manhattan. The council's modifications to the special permit will lower the building site to 218 feet at the top of the street wall of the building with any mechanical space limited to a maximum of 233 feet. This is a reduction of over 100 feet from where we started. Combined with a $10.65 million investment in St. Catharines Park and other investments for the Julia Richmond Educational Complex that makes this a great outcome for New York City. With the changes we're making today, I think we have responsibly balanced the concerns of this community with the broader citywide need for improving our life science sector. We will also be producing high quality construction jobs and building service jobs, which is always a win for communities across New York City. And with that, I will allow uh, Council Member Ben Kalos uh, for his remarks. During my time in office, I've been proud to support the expansion of the life sciences sector in my district. I negotiated a three city block expansion of Rockefeller University over the FDR Drive, which resulted in a $50 million investment in a crumbling waterfront. I also helped secure $9 million to open a new biotech incubator we first thought of back on New Year's Day 2014 when we first met on their project. I cut the ribbon on Cornell Tech campus on Roosevelt Island, the Belfer Research Building, we opened a new Memorial Sloan Kettering vertical campus on 74th Street. We're expanding HSS over the FDR, and we have a new HSS 30-story medical tower on 79th Street, and just announced, I believe, this week on First Avenue, a new hospital building on 74th Street. That's just to name a few, and that's not an exhaustive list. Each project involved working closely with the community, whether as of right or through a discretionary process. From the beginning of this process, we have agreed that we have an important opportunity to update and upgrade the New York Flood Center so it can continue to be a vital asset for our city. I believe that the best way to achieve this vision would be through a significant modification to the building from a commercial office tower that the Flood Center originally proposed. The developers made the unprecedented choice to skip working with local community board local elected officials, and instead put all their efforts into overturning member deference, now and forever. This is the first rezoning where no changes were made at the community board or for the borough president. The first change was offered at the first and only zoning hearing just last month, where more than 100 residents came out in opposition, along with every single elected official, including Congress member Carol Maloney, State Senator Liz Krueger, Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright, and Borough President Gail Brewer. After more than five separate requests, the developer finally came to the table this Monday. And only after skipping a meeting in the afternoon did they show up to a meeting in the evening. We had two more meetings on Tuesday evening. In a council where land use projects are often negotiated to the last moment, the developer once again refused to negotiate this morning. We have had more conversations in 36 hours than we did in the preceding 36 months. We came close to a win-win for both sides, but we haven't gotten there. There remain modest changes to the building, like moving a 30-foot mechanical void to the roof from the middle of the building, lowering extra luxury 20-foot ceiling heights throughout the building to something more reasonable and a contextual height limit to protect against what will now be a 500-foot as of right tower that they can build, all of which would have had zero programmatic impact on the Bled Center or its partners while getting us to a building that would work for my constituents. Ultimately, these remaining changes were rejected, and I have to vote no on this proposal. Today's outcome sets a troubling precedent for council members' ability to win for the city and their constituents. With today's vote, we become a city where real estate developers are only emboldened to sidestep the concerns of the communities in which they build. The longstanding tradition of member deference has been in place to give New Yorkers in 51 council districts across five boroughs a voice at the table with developers who seek to reshape the very neighborhoods in which they live. 
thanks to a rarely invoked Charter 200A3 protest filed by buildings included in this spot zoning against their will, when this project comes to a vote of the full council, it may require a three quarters supermajority to pass. I urge my colleagues to consider the precedents we are setting and vote their conscience. As I've said before, and I will say again, no matter the outcome of the vote, we will work with the Blood Center to build a new modern facility. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. I would like to also recognize that we've been joined by Councilmember Feliz. Uh, with that, are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? Are there any questions or remarks from members of the committee? No, seeing none, I will call for a, I will call for a vote and note that a vote on aye on all will be to adopt the following. Approve LUs 847, LUs 888, LUs 884, 885, 886, and 887, LUs 896, and to approve the modifications I've described, LUs 848 through 851, 889 through 893, LUs 869 through 874, 868, 865, and 866, LUs 867 and 868, preconsiders LUs, preconsiders LUs for 1045 Atlantic Avenue, LUs 882 and 883, and LUs 894 and 895. I want to make a correction. Uh, we also LU number 864 through 866. Will the clerk please call the roll? William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote. All items are coupled. Chair Salamanca. Aye on all. Gibson. Councilmember Gibson to explain her vote. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. Goodness, it's been a long day already. Many of us have been here since 10 a.m. this morning. Uh, thank you, Chair, and all of my colleagues and those who are watching. I just wanted to speak on the New York Blood Center proposal that is before this body and truly understand Councilmember Ben Kalos and all of the work that he's done serving uh, with you as your colleague for the past eight years. As council members, it is our responsibility to make sure that we address the issues of our individual districts. I support member deference and I recognize that council members should know what's in the best interest of the residents in which they represent. But I also know that there are instances that we come across as a member of this body in which projects physically sit in one district but have a citywide impact. As someone who represents a district in the Bronx of working families who have struggled over the past two years during COVID-19 with access to food and quality health care and jobs and dealing with the plague of gun violence that I face every single day in the Bronx, I know that there are instances where the New York blood sensors work saves lives of my constituents in the Bronx. When you talk about life sciences and research and education and 21st century technology, when you talk about people that live with debilitating diseases every single day, it is the work of the New York Blood Center that can not only save their lives, but that can give them stability. And as someone who understands the work that the Blood Center has done, understanding that this building is old, if this body does not take any action, I don't know what the future will hold for the New York Blood Center. And so for my time here in the City Council, as someone who has always supported council member deference, understanding that you should be the biggest champion on behalf of your district. But I need a little bit more than understanding that shadows over a park and construction noise is the reason why I'm being asked to oppose a project. I want substance. I want you to tell me how you can save the lives of my people who have been devastated by COVID-19. I want to understand how we can create more jobs for our people in this city. 
good paying jobs that build sustainability and create a real pathway to the middle class. And so I say all that to say, as council members, we take positions that are sometimes not popular, but the right thing to do. What is the right thing to do is not always the popular thing to do. And so I'm going to stand here as a member of this body who has served with all of my colleagues for eight years, and I'm going to support what is the right thing to do for the future of my constituents so they can live healthier, more vibrant lives for themselves and their families, and they can have the good paying jobs that they rightfully deserve. In a city that grows unaffordable every single day, and for those of us that represent districts where our people are struggling for basic necessities, I cannot stand here and oppose a project that will have life-saving measures in the long term, not short term, but looking to the future. And so I thank you colleagues, I thank you Chair Salamanca and the land use team and Raju Mann and everyone for all of the great work that you've done to get us to this point. No project is perfect. No project ends the way it starts. And I know a lot of labor has gone into this proposal. And with that, I will be voting yes on behalf of my constituents in the Bronx that I know will benefit from this New York Blood Center's proposal. I vote yes on all. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Well, um, we're going to ask the Sergeant of Arms if you can just um, uh, two minutes for all the members an opportunity when they vote. Thank you. Barron. Councilmember Barron to explain her vote. Can you just reset the clock for Councilmember Barron so we get the mic on? Thank you. I won't take two minutes. All thank right, you thank so you. much. Thank you to the chair. Uh, I just want to say I will eye on all. And I think that the negotiations that finally came about with the Blood Center are ones that I can accept. Many of you know that I did have some concerns and I expressed them to you. But I think that the proposal that we've come to is one that I can uh, support. And I also want to say, I also had some concerns because we're giving up residential to rezone as commercial. And I think that the developer, Longfellow Real Estate, is going to be uh, quite, come out quite profitable in this venture. But I do think that the blood center being able to have new accommodations, new facilities, even though I understand it's not really an increase in space, but an opportunity to update their equipment, will be able to benefit from that. Thank you. Councilmember Ku. Yeah, I, I respect uh, Council Member Kahlo's effort uh, in helping uh, his community, but uh, in considering uh, New York Bus Center has uh, come down on the high and other incentives for the community, uh, I will vote a stain on A64, A65, and A66, and I for the other ones. Thank you. Levin. Permission to explain? Council Member Levin to explain his vote. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, first, I, I just want to acknowledge um, uh, the work that Council Member Lander did um, on the Gowanus rezoning and the community. Um, uh, we spoke about it at the subcommittee, so um, I'll refer you to my comments there. Um, and, but I, I also want to um, acknowledge the work that Councilmember Kalos has done in, in, um, in uh, making this a more contextual building and bringing down the height uh, significantly um, over 100 feet um, uh, to accommodate um, uh, the shadow impacts on the, on the neighborhood um, park across the street. Um, I can just as a, a, a matter of, of 
policy, I recognize that um, uh, having sunlight in an open space is important um, to the families that use it, and, um, and so that's, that's a, a real impact. And so I commend Councilmember Kalos on, on, his, um, on his work to, to, to minimize that impact. Um, even if it's not all the way that uh, he was hoping to get, I think that it, it's uh, significant. And so with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilmember Miller. Councilmember Miller votes aye on all. Reynoso. Councilmember Reynoso votes aye on all. Councilmember Traeger. Aye. Councilmember Traeger votes aye. Gordenchik. I'm going to reserve my comments to the stated, but I, I know that the, we're not voting on some one issue today uh, at the stated that we're voting on now, and uh, I want to be consistent with my voting, so I vote aye on all with the exception of land use numbers 864, 5, and 6, of which I vote no. Thank you. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Adams to explain her vote. Thank you, Chair Salamanca, for your leadership on all of these land use proposals, I'd like to congratulate Councilmember Lander on the long-awaited Gowanus project. And I'd also like to congratulate Councilmember Kalos on his exceptional work on advocating on behalf of his community and his district. I'm voting yes on the New York Blood Center rezoning. This project will have a tremendous impact, not just on our city, but globally. It is an opportunity for economic development, growth, and jobs that we simply cannot pass up during a crucial time in our recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. As a woman, I am particularly sensitive to the issues of sickle cell disease, HIV AIDS, black maternal morbidity, and the need to save lives of women of color in the crosshairs of early death. I understand the sensitivity of this proposal and I believe that its benefits will make a substantial difference in life sciences and global health. With that, I vote aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye. Ruben Diaz, Sr. Permission to explain my vote? Councilmember Diaz explains his vote. Thank you. I heard people saying I respect Councilmember Carroll's but I'm gonna vote yes. People saying that. There's no way you're gonna respect a council member if you're voting against him. The only thing that a council member has is the option to decide what the people in the district that voted for him won. Once you take away that member uh, tool to represent his community, that member worth, worth nothing. He's been disrespected. This is not about Kellos. This is not about Kellos. Somebody in the future, I got about 25 more days here. So I could care less if I'm going to put it that way. But the future of this body, the people that are coming, that are going to represent their community. They spend money, they spend time, they went around trying to get elected, and the community trusted them to elect them, and they're here to represent. Now, when they come here and they have no power, they have no saying in what the community wants, that's disrespectful, not only to the council member, but the community that that council member represents. So, Kelos had never been with me. You remember, remember here that never been supporting me, but I'm going to support Kellos because it's the principle, the member dif difference. That member should be should be respected, and I'm even though I'm leaving, and even though Kellos never supported me, I am supporting Kellos this time, and I'm voting no in LU 864, 865, and 866. And one more thing, one more thing. Somebody sent me some information saying that the Blood Center spent $178 million 
Last year, in staff salaries, they got 1,749 employees, but they spent 178 million in salary. That picture doesn't look right. So Mr. Chairman, I'm voting yes in everything else except 864, 865, and 866. And to those members that are gonna keep, that are gonna stay here next year, for the next four years, be careful what you wish for. You might get it. Thank you. Councilmember Moya. Rivera. I vote aye. Riley. Councilmember Riley votes aye. Councilmember Brooks Powers. Councilmember Brooks Powers votes aye. Councilmember Feliz. Councilmember Feliz votes aye. Councilmember Borelli. I vote aye. Thank you. One moment. All items in today's land use agenda have been adopted by a vote of 18 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with land use items 864, 865, and 866 being adopted by the committee with a vote of 15 in the affirmative, two in the negative, and one abstention. That is a full committee, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff, and Sergeant of Arms for attending today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.